Great Britain's research establishment at Howell is under the direction of Dr. Cockcroft. You have seen the story of a remarkable scientific achievement based on the work of scientists of many nations, but owing most of all to the work of Rutherford and the School of Nuclear Physics which he developed. The final achievement of the release of nuclear energy for war was due largely to the scientists and engineers of the United States, stimulated and helped by British physics. We have now the task of using the immense power of nuclear energy for peaceful purposes, for the production of radioactive materials, for medical and biological research, and for the generation of heat and power. With our present knowledge, it is possible to design nuclear power stations which will produce power at a moderate efficiency. Until we acquire operating experience of these plants, we do not know how economical they will be, nor are we sure of overcoming all the technical difficulties which will occur in a large-scale development of nuclear power. Nevertheless, there is a real promise that over the next few decades, world power resources can be greatly increased, and that the very great benefits to be obtained will do much to increase standards of living. It is the hope of every scientist that nuclear energy will lead to the establishment of a world organization for the effective control of all weapons of mass destruction, and through this, to the abolition of war. From Dalton's theory to atomic power. It is a long road, but the landmarks are clear. With the atomic theory as a basis, a pretty picture of the elements of our material world was fitted together during the 19th century. The discovery of electrons. The realization of the nature of positivity, first investigated by Becquerel and then by the Curies, led Lord Rutherford to make the greatest single advance in atomic theory. He pictured a small heavy nucleus in the atom round which the electrons revolved. In 1919, Rutherford discovered how to change one element to another by bombardment with alpha particles. He suggested that the nucleus of the atom might contain protons and uncharged particles of about the same mass. In 1932, scientists could say with certainty that the atom contained electrons carrying unit negative charges and a nucleus built up of protons carrying unit positive charges and of neutrons, uncharged particles equal in mass to protons, whose existence was proved by Sir James Chadwick. In 1932 also, Cockcroft and Walton split the lithium atom by bombardment with protons and found that mass could actually be translated into energy in perfect accord with Einstein's theory. Atomic disintegrations provoked by great machines became a commonplace of well-equipped physics laboratories. In 1939, the possibility of a self-sustaining chain reaction suggested the wholesale release of energy. Controlled chain reactions were achieved in the atomic pile. The imagination of the world has been stirred by the prospect of adapting such piles to use as sources of heat energy and as sources of radioactive materials for use in medicine. In research laboratories, the scientists are even now writing fresh pages in this unfinished story. But overall, the smoke of the atomic bomb hangs like a pall. If we are to reach the future that promises so bravely, the peoples of the world must see that this new power is wisely used.